Welcome back. It is Show and Tell with Eric. Pause for titles. Hey, Eric. Good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah. Uh, hey, nice to see you again, too. What do you got for us today? Well, today, as promised, I have a pen. <laughs> Of course, pens come in many different varieties. They've been in existence for hundreds, maybe thousands of years. But this particular one is a modern retractable pen. And that means that you have this little button here and it's spring loaded. We, should we take it apart and see what's inside? I love breaking stuff. Absolutely. So we're just, and the nice thing is you don't even have to break it. You just pull it apart there and you can see that the pen consists of these parts. The central core, and this is where the ink is housed. You have your nib or stylus here, and then that fits into this little nozzle part here that's spring-loaded. There's a little tiny spring in there. And now, where do they make the little springs? Do they have regular springs and they just like shrink them down? Today's modern springs are grown on spring plantations, which are operated by huge industrial combines. Uh, back in the old days, of course, and it's, it's the shame of the uh, pen industry. This is the shameful secret. Many uh, springs for retractable pens were uh, actually harvested by slave labor. Let's and just take a moment of silence. Okay, now what else? It is 1733, go. Yeah, in 1733, they were still using goose quills. Uh, they would actually pluck a long feather from a goose about about yay long, maybe can you stand back a little bit. About yay long, and these goose quills then would be sharpened to a fine point with a with a pen knife, slit down the middle, and that uh, would create a little thing you could dip in an ink well, an actual bottle of liquid ink, which and was then, harvest from the octopus at the time. Well, there were several sources for ink at the time, and in fact, octopus ink was used uh, in some I do places. know things. But again, that was that was in the 1700s. And now, of course, we have modern... It's 2012. We have modern chemical inks. This is what is commonly referred to as a gel pen, which I always thought was a little bit of a misnomer, because uh, it makes the, the pen sound gelatinous. It's not the pen that's a gel at all. It's the ink inside that's suspended in a in a gel type medium. Now can you use this ink as hair gel? Is there a double? Well first of all you wouldn't want to use it as hair gel for a number of reasons. First of all you'd need an awful lot of pens to get the gel out. And second of all it would, in, in your case it would change the color of your hair to this sort of vaguely rat colored thing you got going to a very dark black and uh, and it would be kind of crusty and, and you know, it would be nasty. You wouldn't want to use it. Yourself. Yeah, that's so 1980s. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Yeah, exactly. And of course, when you when you reassemble the pen, now you have this lovely little easy to carry uh, device, and with this little push button here, you can actually retract the nib inside of the shaft. And so that is your <laughs> that is your model. All the guys know what that means, huh? And so there, in brief, is uh, the most common writing instrument on the planet today, the modern ballpoint gel pen uh, in its retractable form. Balls to the walls, pen. But why do you always got to go there? <laughs> you just, well, you mean, your mama raised you better than that. You know that. You don't have to, you don't have to go there. You don't have to get that low for laughs, man. 